thank you for what you have in store for us. And uh, Lord, we honor you. We give you this morning. And we give you this day. And Lord, that it would honor you in every capacity and every way. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, for the last, as you know, for the last 15 years since we've been in practice, right away early on, if a, another doctor comes in here and they says, you know what, Dr. Pete, your systems and procedures aren't that great. They're right. Um, they can always get better. But it's truly been the grace of God that's allowed us to see the million plus patient visits over the last 15 years from all over the world. Like you can't make it up. Um, I, I can't take credit for it. It's actually in spite of me, not because of me. It's the grace of God. Um, but for 15 years, early on when we first got started, none of you were here, but when I first opened up, the Lord said, if you would simply give your staff the overflow of your walk with me, I will take care of everything. And so that's what we've been doing for 15 years. And so now we've just started today, we're switching it over to the Dr. Pete public page, just because I don't really accept any friends on the personal page. I've never asked for friends there. And so we're just gonna give more and more people the opportunity to come kind of behind the scenes of our staff meeting. And this, you know, you've been here for years and this is just what we do. Um, raw and unscripted, so to speak. But I really feel today we're gonna start something from the beginning. We're gonna lay a, a new foundation, um, the original foundation. I was with my family this Sunday morning and we had sports and everywhere, and, but we just sat down together as a family and I really apologized to my boys in, in my kids and I just said, you know, it's uh, forgive me because I have allowed you to believe that salvation and the gospel was something uh, that it wasn't. And so I began to break down a foundation for my kids that I will continue to build upon, whether it's five minutes here, 10 minutes here, whatever. And I just feel like what we're gonna do here is we're gonna lay a foundation, okay? What is our purpose? Why are we here? And it's a lot different than we're told elsewhere. It's a lot different than most people assume. And so I wanna kind of break this down for you. Um, it, and we're gonna go back to, again, is, is the power of a transformed life. But in Genesis 1, the initial original intent for our life, okay, is Genesis 1, Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness in verse 27 so God created man in his image in the image of God he created him male and female he created them and so we were created initially the initial intent for the human race was created in the image and likeness of God and what's the image of God love and in love there's no self okay as we go on in Genesis 3 verse 3 it says but the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. So the initial intent for man was we were creating the image and likeness of God. It's completely, it's the love of God, the opportunity to be in relationship with the living God, to walk with God in the cool of the day. How awesome is that, okay? Then he said to Adam, do not eat of this tree, lest you die. Well, what's, what dies? The image of God dies. What dies? Sonship dies. What dies? Our original intent and purpose for our life. You eat of this tree and you shall die. What? The se there's a separation. No longer will you begin to really truly have a revelation, really the image of God. And so watch this. So in verse 12 of Genesis 3, it says, Then the man said, The woman whom you gave to be uh, with me, she gave me of the tree, and I ate. So watch what happens. God creates us in his image, the image of God, which is love, completely selfless. God says, If you eat of this tree, you will die. What dies? Sonship, the image of God dies. Verse 12, they eat of it, and guess what happens instantly? It's her fault. Instantly, self-preservation. Instantly, self-centeredness. Instantly, self-seeking. And so the image of God that's love is completely lost in the garden, and it becomes all about us. Does that make sense? Okay? So I want you to understand this, because what we've done is we said salvation, 
I pray a prayer, I go to heaven, and now I live a self-centered, self-seeking life. But remember, in James 3 it said, self-seeking is demonic. What's demonic? It's not God. It's opposite of God's nature. But what happens so often is we have a, the wrong perspective of why we're even here. So we pray a prayer and now all of a sudden we assume that we have God's endorsement to live exactly like we did before. Salvation is not simply my ticket to heaven and eternal life. Salvation is the power of a transformed life. It's a revelation. It's an aha moment that says, wow, I actually wasn't created for me. But what happens is we can come to Christ, okay? He is the way, the truth, and the life. Christ isn't an obstacle. He's an open door, what? To the Father, right? He said, whosoever shall call upon me shall be saved. But it's not just saved for eternal life that one day I'm going to go to heaven, right? One day I have a golden ticket to the, the great by and by. No, salvation is the power to transform me back into my original intent. What's the original intent? The image of God. So watch this. The image of God is love, and in love there's no self. Through the fall of man, okay, man, the image of God, dies. Sonship is removed. The original intent and purpose of man is lost. Love dies, in the, and it's the beginning of self-preservation and self-centeredness. Then what man said, like I said in verse 12 of Genesis 3, the woman you gave to be, she gave me of the tree and I ate, it's her fault. But what's salvation? John 3, 3, it says, Jesus answered, said to him, most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Born again, what do you mean? Back to the original intent. We were initially, when we come into this world, when we were born into, by our mother and father, we are born into Adam. And in Adam, it's all about us. Even our kids are raised up, and what's the first thing? It's me, it's mine. It's all about me. But what happens is, we have allowed many people to assume that I come to Christ, okay, because I want to go to heaven. And so we even preach the gospel that says, well, just confess, you know, Confess Him. It's Jesus. He's the way, the truth, and life. And what happens is we pray this prayer so I can get to heaven one day. And then when I look at you pre and post, tell me, you look the exact same. I can't even tell you apart. Still self-centered. Come to Jesus, self-centered. Come to the Holy Spirit, even more self-centered. And now all of a sudden it's all about what God can do for me. Make my life better. Keep me from the fire. But that's not even salvation. In Christ, I'm born again. What I'm born back to the original intent. The reason God created man in the first place, the image of God, to be in fellowship with Him, the love of God. In fact, everything we know in Scripture, faith works through what? Love. Where there's no self. Where there's no self-seeking. Why? Because faith is a perspective of how I see my life. It's a vantage point of how I see my life. Faith is not something I do to get something. Faith is not something I do to just benefit my life more. Faith is not something I do to just keep me from the fire. Faith is a vantage point for how I live my life. It's an aha moment that says, oh, by the way, it's not even about me in the first place. It's a revelation that, wow, I've come back into sonship. I am now a son. I'm redeemed. I was a lost son, and now I've been found. And so now I'm redeemed back into my original intent, the image of God. I can have a relationship with the living God. Where, where I take on his nature. Jesus says, hey, I'm the way to what? To the Father, back into the family of God, where he's your daddy, where he's your everything, where I sit in here and he establishes me in my worth, value, and identity as what? As a child of God, as a son of God. That's what my Father does. Jesus says, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm paving the way for you to come all the way to your Father, to your daddy, your Abba Father, where you can be established in what? In who you are, who's you, and who your God is. What are you establishing? You are born again. You're born, you're brand new. What? You've come back to the original intent. What's the original intent? The image of God. The love of God. Where I come to Him and I take on His nature. How do I take on His nature? By spending time with Him. 
Jesus came and he took away the, the wall of separation. Now I come boldly into the throne of grace to attain grace and mercy in time of need. So now I'm yeah, literally in the presence of God. I have access into the very presence of God all the time. And when I spend time with my Father, He begins to establish me in what? In my worth, value, and identity. It's what Ephesians 3 talks about. Paul says, hey, you guys are rich in everything, but you live your life as beggars because you do not have a revelation of what's been paid for you, of who you now are, are, who you now are as a child of God. But if you would come, let me establish you. Even in the first three chapters of Ephesians, he establishes us once again and reiterates, this is who you now are. You are a son. And when I have a revelation of, of my new identity in Christ, that I am a son of God, that I'm an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ, that I'm in the family of God, that I'm not a foster child anymore. I'm not trying to earn my Father's love, but that's what we do in the body of Christ. We're trying to earn and deserve something that's already been paid for. The kingdom of God is about believing and receiving. It's having a, a fresh revelation. Open up the eyes of my understanding that they would be enlightened. That I would have a revelation of what this thing is all about. That He paid the price that God, in the midst of my sin, in the midst of my self-centeredness, in the midst of my self-seeking, he said, there's too much potential on that person. So he sent his son for God so loved the world that even while he was a sinner, even while he was messed up, I didn't send my son because he was pathetic. I sent my son because he was worth it. Because the original intent for his life was so much more than what he's living for. So he sent his son to take my, the, the penalty and, and take my place and become my substitute and take my sin and shame and guilt and everything and put it upon himself and give me eternal life. Make me like him. Bring me back into the family of God. He's the way, the truth, and the life. Back into the family of God. But now, once I'm in the family of God and I come and I spend time with my father, he establishes me in and what happens when I spend time with him? I take on his nature. And he, he fills up the rooms of my life and, and he identifies me as his, as his son. But what happens is if I don't have a revelation of that and what the purpose of salvation for is I pray a prayer to go to heaven when the reality was I'm redeemed from myself to allow heaven to come back to me, the original intent. I am now an heir of God. My citizenship is in heaven. I'm an ambassador. I'm a representation of heaven on earth. I come to represent the kingdom of God. I am now a new creation in Him. But it means my life isn't my own anymore. So watch this. Salvation is the end of myself. Salvation is not, now I got God, and so I'm going to apply principles and promises to better my life. Salvation is a revelation that my life is no longer my own, that I deny myself. I pick up my cross and fall, I lay down my agenda. I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless, it's not even I who lives anymore. But Christ who lives within me, and the life that I live in this world, this natural, I live by the faith, the perspective of heaven, that I'm no longer my own, that I'm, that I'm His. That I've been redeemed back into what? The love of God, the image of God, and in love there's no self, and so self-seeking is demonic. If it's all about, bless, it's a bless me club, that's, demon, that's not even God. But if I have a revelation of who I am, whose I am, and who my God is, I realize that He gives me already Everything that pertains to life and godliness, He withholds no good thing from me. He's my shepherd, I shall not want. He fills up the rooms of my life, and now He gives me everything to do what? To be like Him. He gives me everything to do what? To shine like Him. He gives me everything to what? To go in the midst of the fire and be like Him in the midst of the fire. Not to keep me from the fire. Paul says, I rejoice in tribulation. That's not just the Christian thing to do. He said, why? Because I have a revelation that even in the midst of the fire, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, like even like Daniel and Lions that says, my God is so big, so strong, and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. And now I've come to represent. And I come with all authority with, over all the power of the enemy in the world, but not of the world. I come to represent the kingdom of God because that's who I am. 
But that realm of faith that moves mountains, that belief system, doesn't happen unless it works through love and that selfish, selflessness. No longer me. Any self-seeking does not produce faith or heaven. Faith works through love, a revelation of who I now am. In love, in love, there's no self. So I've come to be like him, where I laid on my agenda. And when there's when I come and I take on his nature, and I'm dead to myself, then you can no longer offend me. Because how do you offend a dead person? You cannot kill me anymore, because how do you kill a dead person? Sin against me no longer produces sin in me. I take no record of wrongs. I take on the nature of God. And that place, that perspective, is where faith, true faith operates. Any self-seeking is faithless. Anything that considers this world my reality, faithless. But when I take on the perspective of heaven that works through love, where the perspective of my life is no longer my own. It's not my life anymore. From that place, grace works through faith. And we're going to break this down as we go. And what's grace? The power to transform me and continue to make me like him. The power to bring heaven to earth. The power to make truth my reality. That's awesome. So the purpose of my life and the purpose of salvation is to make me like him. Back to the original intent for my life. Not pray a prayer to go to heaven. It's receiving a gift of God's only Son, Jesus Christ. It's an aha moment that says, Wow, you are the way, the truth, and life. I've been living my life for me, and it was never the intent. My life was meant for you. And now I, set, I get set free, so He gives me the way to the Father. My Father establishes me, He fills me up, He identifies me as a son or as a daughter. And I am his, and he is mine. And there's nothing greater than that because he fully satisfies me. He gives me everything that pertains to life and godliness. He withholds no good thing from me. He comes to give life and give it more abundantly. And it's from that place that I can look at you and I can see worth and value. It's from that place that I can give unto you and not expect anything in return because there's nothing you can give me that he hasn't already established me in if I truly understand what I now have in Christ. There's no opportunity for me to even be self-seeking or have an ulterior motive or be envious or jealous or covet. Why? Because I'm so satisfied and fulfilled in him. There's a place that we can come to where he establishes us. And we take on his nature, and his nature is love. And then when someone walks through these doors, my only response is to expose their worth and value. Not condemn them, not judge them, not tell them what they're doing wrong. To expose the destiny and the potential that God created them for. Manifest the kingdom of God. How easy is that? But what we think is that we have to be God's judge. We have to defend him. Trust me, he can stand on his own two feet. I've come to become an expert witness. What am I an expert witness of? The kingdom of God. The love of God. And it's from that place of love where I expose your worth and value, where I see potential and destiny. I'm not here to condemn you or judge you. I'm here to love you and expose you. Not expose sin. That's what Jesus did. He didn't come to expose sin. The cross didn't expose sin. It was an indictment against sin. It came to expose worth and value. That you were worth it. So today, let's expose this world's worth and value. But let's know the true purpose of why we're here. And the true purpose of salvation. Salvation is not an obstacle. It's an open door to become like him. Back to the original intent. Heavenly Father, we honor you and bless you. Lord, I thank you. 
I thank you for what you're doing in our lives. I thank you for what you have in store for us today. I thank you for the people that will come literally from all over. And Lord, that you would give us the great grace and freedom. Simply allow them to know that they are well loved. And Lord, that we'd expose their worth and value. In Jesus' name, amen.